Are you ready for tonight's comedian? <laughs> hey, I like right. these guys already. Well, our comedian tonight has made over 150 appearances in 17 states from Hawaii to Washington, D.C. And as of tonight, he has appeared before <laughs> 5,082 people. <laughs> and I want you to sit back, relax, enjoy the show, and please put your hands together for a retired school teacher, America's favorite old man, Arizona Lou. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I um, do have a list. Uh, if you go to ArizonaLou.com of all my appearances, <laughs> it doesn't seem to impress anybody <laughs> but me. <laughs> and um, you're you're from you're from here, Hatteras. Welcome to Sunset. And you are and. You're from? Chapel. Yeah, okay. And where are you folks from? Virginia. Okay, everybody from South Carolina, huh? No, Virginia. Virginia, I'm sorry. Okay, and you're? Colorado. Colorado, all right. Well, that that's cool. I'm from Give your... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> did I miss anybody? And my husband and dog that are somewhere here. Okay, also from Massachusetts. Better be. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I uh, want to thank you for coming out and seeing an old guy. You ask, how old? How, how old? old? Yes. <laughs> you hardly said anything. You expect me to do this comedy stuff by myself? <laughs> Everybody now, how old? How, how old? old? 73. Wow. <laughs> Hundred years old. <laughs> Can anybody beat that? Not yet. Yep. I was, <laughs> I was born in MCMXLI. <laughs> now, you're, you're figuring it out. That's Roman numerals. I always have to explain it to people from Stumpy Point. <laughs> when I was a kid, that's all we had. Roman numerals, not Stumpy Point. <laughs> And things were difficult back then. Roman numerals took up so much space that we had to have huge kids' blocks. Hey, Johnny, pick up your blocks. I can't, Dad. They're too heavy, big rocks. And we had a whole different meaning for XXX. <laughs> it looks like you three people haven't been watching enough pornography. You better shape up. <laughs> and the serial number was bigger than my iPhone. And every time I'd dial a number, I'd get Roman charges. <laughs> and yeah, the last time I saw a crowd like this was when they crossed the Red Sea. <laughs> I'm going to remember you guys and invite you. You'd spice up my funeral. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. <laughs> Too late, it was Thursday. <laughs> now, I know you're on vacation, and you probably threw your calendar away. You're not on vacation. But today's Tuesday. If I'm lucky, I'll remember what I want to say tonight. If you're lucky, I'll forget. <laughs> Us seniors do get lost a lot and forget stuff. And in fact, I got lost driving here with my GPS. You ask, what's that? What's, what's that? that? You still don't want to know, do you? <laughs> I forgot. Now, for, for this young man, it probably is geezer P. Plainly superior. Now, in my case, it's geezer plain and stupid. Stupid like my ex. 
brother-in-law are stupid like thinking an old guy can stand up here and be funny <laughs> which you just proved with the last two jokes let me get something to wet my whistle here geezer and stupid doesn't that make you think of Congress <laughs> yep. yep right now they're trying to put a law together to keep the Federal Reserve from responding quickly to emergencies. Now who better to do that than Congress? <laughs> I mean, they not only create the emergencies, then they sit there and do nothing about it. <laughs> and when I was, uh, I forgot my notes, I guess I'm going to do this without notes, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> uh, when I was young, uh, I observe people, and you have to, who do things, they're, they're not too bright. They do stupid things. Uh, like uh, the, the old guy who became famous for doing stupid stuff. When I was a kid, it was, we called him the mountain man. Hey, I climbed this mountain during a lightning storm and talked to God came down with these two rocks and you people were so disgusting I smashed them and they were important. Now I'm not sure where he got that idea because they didn't say anything about stand-up comedy. And, but he wasn't the only one. Anybody know who that was? Moses. Moses? That sounds right. Yeah, and people who wanted Sunday school here thought you were getting it. <laughs> Later, I gave him directions, and he thought he knew everything. He didn't pay attention, and he got lost and wandered around the desert for 40 years. But he wasn't the only one that got famous by doing stupid stuff. Oh, maybe uh, the Kardashians would be an example. <laughs> or Congress again. But also, our Columbus. He got lost four times on the wrong continent. Hey, I'm not going to let anybody tell me what to do. He wasn't very good at navigating by the stars. And then he had trouble with this on star. <laughs> and I think I'm going to have to go up and get my notes because I'm not that good yet. I'll be right back. Intermission. Anybody want to take over for a couple of minutes? <laughs> okay. It's a wonderful sunset. Beautiful. Isn't it? How many miles across the sound? About 25. 25? Wow. Not quite 25. <laughs> and how much tide do you have in the south? About 6 inches, 10 inches? No, there's a little bit more than that. I mean, on the ocean side, we get probably average 3 to 4 feet. And no. Really? And here it's maybe 2 to 4. Wow. In case you're interested, you've just seen a first. That's the first, first time that ever happened. I used to, uh, to avoid confusion on my trips, I go by Arizona Lou, and before 1912 I went by Territory Lou. Now I always have to explain it to people from New Jersey. Arizona became a state in 1912, <laughs> and before that I went by Caveman Lou, <laughs> and hey, these keep coming. <laughs> I've got to do something between now and sunset. And before that, I went by Ditch Lou. And that's not funny. I don't know why you're laughing. Because it was just it was just a little ditch. And then it grew and grew and grew. And then I went by Grand Canyon Lou. <laughs> Uh, speaking of, have you ever done something that is 
makes sense to you, but other people think it's kind of weird. Well, back home in Phoenix, I picked my electric toothbrush up from where I dropped it and brushed my teeth. Hey, I was just standing there. It's waterproof. I hadn't done anything yet. I rinsed it off, and every week I cleaned the toilet. <laughs> and that's disgusting, too. <laughs> This is my first time doing this comedy show in two weeks because of the rain rained me out. And I'm about to pee in my pants. Or did I? I forgot. <laughs> you're the only one that's close enough to know for sure. I don't know why you're laughing. <laughs> I notice kids look real carefully when I say that. But at my age, or maybe I should say our age, we're looking for any excuse to pee <laughs> on short notice. Now, you people way out there over there by the wall, you're smarter than we thought you were being way over there. <laughs> like they say in SeaWorld, ladies and gentlemen, during tonight's performance, the front row may get splashed. And that's just disgusting too. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be surrounded by negative people. Not anymore. <laughs> they got old and all that dead. <laughs> but I try to be fit. And the other day I bought some string beans on sale. They were so stringy. I could eat them and floss my teeth at the same time. And I went to the store on the way here. I stopped by a store. And as usual, I parked out away so I could run to the store and stir up my tired blood. I didn't buy anything. I just sort of browsed a little bit. And then, going back to my car, I was running. Kids said, hey, Grandpa, how come you're running so fast? Well, you would be too if you'd been shoplifting. <laughs> I recommend it. Excellent exercise. <laughs> then I also stopped by the gym on the way, and my first stop in the gym was the treadmill. And I was running, and the fit body to my left was running faster than me, so I sped up. No use. Hey, how come you're running faster than me and passing me up? Treadmills aren't supposed to work that way. Well, you're just a little white guy, and I'm from Nairobi. So? Stupid, that's the capital of Kenya, and we win Boston marathons. Well, my next stop in the gym was the weight room. Nope, machines. And I recognize those machines. They just put logos and phone pads from machines I remember from when I was a kid at the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> now, if you've ever noticed in pictures from back then, when they had the naked subjects on the machines torturing them, they always had a little towel covering exactly the right spot. I was the towel boy. Hang on! I've got the towel here. Don't put him on the rack yet. And you have such weird things nowadays, weird ways to call things. When we wanted to go see a torturer, we'd say, I'm going to go down to the dungeon and visit the Inquisitor. Now, when you guys want to see a torture, you say, I'm going to go down the street and visit the chiropractor. <laughs> or my personal trainer. 
Not like you guys had personal trainers. And we had different words when, when we would have a... Uh, the inquisitors would put bodies in impossible positions. And we would call that inquisition. And you call it torture. Or Guantanamo. Yoga? <laughs> well, the next spot stop there was the weight room. Now, at my age, I have to avoid the big weights. But last year at the DMV, I had a two hour wait. <laughs> well, I there in the weight room I did have to quit doing the bench press because they bolted all the benches down. <laughs> now I can tell man that you haven't pressed any benches. <laughs> and <clears throat> They have this big sign there in the gym saying, free weights. But I've had trouble, you know what's coming, don't you? <laughs> I had trouble getting the 45 pound dumbbells home. <laughs> One of those in my gym bag would make me so unbalanced. My ex would say, Lou, you've always been unbalanced. <laughs> so I considered, putting one in each hand. But wouldn't I look suspicious going out of the gym with two gym bags? Now, I've developed three rules of the gym. I can't count. <laughs> three rules of the gym. And these you want to remember. And I hate to use the F word, but fat always comes off last where you want it off the most. That's rule number one. Rule number two, don't die, <laughs> unless it's convenient, <laughs> or Sunday. Rule number three, uh, forget the gym, take a bowl of chips to the couch and binge watch Fifty Shades of Barney Five. <laughs> or if you're into hot chicks, the Golden Girls. They're not for me. <laughs> Too young. <laughs> and things have been going on in the news. You know, the train that derailed the Philadelphia. The news said the investigators are trying to figure out what made it leave the track. They need a little reasoning. Maybe it's because the train took a 50 mile an hour curve at 106 miles an hour. Or in Texas, they've had some horrible rains and floods. And you talk about people that really are serious about their, edu their vacation. One family was washed away with their house and everything, their vacation house. Now, I'd sure like to have heard the conversation with the between the husband and the wife. Oh, should we stay or should we go? <laughs> I wonder how that... I think I know who won the argument, but I'm not sure about that. And they said, the officials said, they're encouraging people to stay out of harm's way. Well, yeah, I think I was just uh, sit in the middle of the river and see what happens. Or in the middle of the railroad track. I mean, do they figure people don't have any sense at all? And then Baltimore, <laughs> they had the riots there. And so now, believe it or not, the city government is trying to come up with a campaign to encourage tourists to go to Baltimore. Now, I'm not sure. I, I see you here and not Baltimore. <laughs> to me, that makes lots of sense. So I came up with a few slogans that might help them in their campaign, their tourist campaign. 
One slogan would be, Baltimore will cancel anything. Like, remember the Oreos game? <laughs> or, Baltimore, we're experienced at rioting. Or, Baltimore, our first riot helped start the Civil War. 1869, I think. You're probably too young then to remember, <laughs> remember that. Or, Baltimore, our trains stay on the tracks. They had a, uh, in Washington, D.C., they found a pressure cooker in a uh, van that had been abandoned because it thought it might have been a bomb. It was connected with, you heard about that? Mm -hmm. They thought maybe it was connected uh, with a food truck. So in the future, you may have to have a pressure cooker license. I see you're carrying a pressure cooker. Do you have a permit to carry a concealed pressure cooker? But something else could be just as dangerous, could be an iron pot. Do you have an iron pot permit? Well, in Colorado, you might have a pot permit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, who's buying t Time Warner? Charter is buying Time Warner. And I understand they're going to make their telephone messages more honest. Instead of saying, we think we, uh, your call is very important to us, they probably will change it to, we don't care about your call. <laughs> you folks could try this comedy stuff. You're thinking about it, right? Cool. You could be standing up here like me, being disgusting, <laughs> being in your pants. <laughs> Depends. <laughs> oh. I haven't finished the sentence yet. <laughs> it's already <laughs> bad. <laughs> On how things come out, I may tonight I may have a little laundry. I had voice surgery and it's embarrassing on the telephone and my voice goes up high. Hello? This is Arizona Lou. Are your parents home? Yes. They told me in life to earn everything. And yes, they're up on the mantle. <laughs> that one takes a little while sometimes. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming out. Thanks for putting up with me. I enjoyed having you. You're a good crowd. Thank you very much.